Hi, everybody, it's Terry Lynn Boyle coming to you not from Vancouver Island. This week, I'm actually in Port St. John, uh, British Columbia, which is about mile 48 of the Alaska Highway. Um, I'm It'd be nice to say that I'm a traveling medium. I guess, well, I guess I kind of am. But uh, I actually, th I lived here for 17 years. It's a beautiful, beautiful peace country, northern BC, British Columbia. Um, if you have never come up here, come and see it. Drive the Alaska Highway. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the wildlife between the bears and and the coors and the moose and the elk and the, car the caribou and Oh, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, um, and one more animal that happens to be in the room with me. My sister! She lives here in Fort St. John. Oops! And I'm falling. See? I said my sister, and I fall for my sister. Isn't that just special? <laughs> okay, so, Janine, um, come over here and say hello. Okay? Okay, there you are. You have to come over closer to me. Hi, see, there's this is my this is my sister Janine. Hi, everybody. Yeah, she did my makeup. She's the one that complains because I don't put blush on. And... She never puts blush on. Yeah. Okay. Now go sit down. All right, bye. She... <laughs> Janine is my um, is my esthetician. She does all the makeup. She's the creative one when it comes to um, um, beauty. I guess she's she's very good at what she does, and she's uh, she did my makeup earlier this morning, and it's just lovely. And um, yes, so I'm very happy to have my sister in the peanut gallery tonight. Um, what was that? <laughs> she said woohoo. You have to speak up, Chicky. So, um, and then you know I'm here at Fort St. John. There was a few things I wanted to talk about tonight before we get any callers. Um, I I love this. It's a beautiful country, and it's a it has a very wonderful community. Um, I'm here because I had a very dear friend pass away, and so I came up for the funeral and the and the uh, internment. And uh, it's really nice to come up because you see people that you haven't seen in years, and everyone says, "What is the one thing you always say when you go to a funeral?" And you see people you haven't seen in years. Gosh, it's really bad that we should. Uh, we have to get together like this, but it's great to see you, right? Of course. So, my challenge to you is don't say that. Keep in touch. I know life is busy. I know we all have those schedules we have to keep and and, and the money that we need and um, all, all of those wonderful things. But just even if it's on Facebook, hey, how you doing? Keep in touch with the people you care about because you never know when that day is going to come and they may just may not be there, you know. Um, I said a couple weeks ago that I had gone to Texas and I we were walking through the cemetery of, of this little town that I lived in and went to high school and everything. Happy Texas. And yes, there is a town. It's called Happy Texas. It is 30 miles south of Amarillo, Texas, and there's 672 people in it, and this is a town without the frown, and I was Miss Happy 1978. Okay, now I have confessed all of my secrets to you. <laughs> no smart aleck remark? Okay. <laughs> I figured she was going to be an issue, but she's really being quiet over there. So, anyway, we were walking through the cemetery in Happy. And it was kind of like I went, oh, my goodness, that's why she hasn't called me in a couple of years, because a friend of mine had passed away and I didn't know, and um, because I didn't make the effort to call every so often. So even with your busy schedules and all that's going on in your life, it takes two seconds to go on Facebook or to text message or to send an email, especially in today's technology. You know, so do it. Just say, hey, Betty Lou from high school I've just been thinking about you and I just want to say hi I hope all is well with your life and leave it at that just don't don't miss out on anything that um, that uh, that you don't need to miss out on I guess I got a big shout out to all of my grandchildren who are in um, down on the island Vancouver Island except for my beautiful little Veda girl she's here in Fort St. John and I got to spend the afternoon with her today she's two and a half and she is the most beautiful child she is so precious, and um, her mommy, Selena, and her daddy, David, are very good parents to her, and I just am so grateful to get the time to spend with them. And then I come here, and I'm at my dad and my stepmom's house eating dinner, 
because I leave tomorrow morning to go back to the island. And so we came here, my sister and brother-in-law and my, uh, my parents and my husband, we all had a nice dinner. And then I get in the office. So right now I am in my dad and my stepmom's office. Man, the things I can find out. Like, these are all my dad's hats back here, right? And then there's a big filing cabinet over here. I am talking like they have got everything in here. And they won't come in here right now because I'm on the air. So what kind of an opportunity do you think I have? Janine, get let's busy. Do, let's do it. Okay. There's a, there's a, there was, okay, but some things you don't want to find. Yeah, I just found a book. Actually, Janine found it. No, I yeah, you did. And what's it called? Okay. It's called Born to be Hung. And I'm, <laughs> I don't really know what it's about, but yeah, it's, yeah, my sister noticed the title and thought, why is this in our dad's house? Huh. Well, you know. Oh, well, I'm not asking him. You can ask him. I'm not <laughs> Anyway, so. So tonight, we are going to take some callers, and I think it's probably about time we take a caller, don't you, Jane? Yeah. All right, yeah. then. We have Suzanne in Wellington, New Zealand. Are you there, Suzanne? Yes, I'm here. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Very good, thank you. Um, Suzanne, do you have your radio turned up? Um, no, I was watching you on Facebook. Do you have the volume turned up to that? Yes, yes, I do. Could you turn it down a little bit, please? Is that better? That's much better. Thank you very much. Um, so how can I help you tonight? Oh, you're in New Zealand. My goodness. Now, I don't know much about yes. New Zealand, although there's a really cute guy with blonde hair. And we call him Kiwi, and I just like him just to talk to me because <laughs> I love the accent. So, <laughs> yes, so just um, talk to me. Anything for my future? Okay, okay. I bet you. We... Let me just. Oh, okay. So you're just looking to know: uh, is it your career you're looking at? Just anything, really. I'm sorry? Yes, anything, really? Oh, anything, okay. Okay, yes. Suzanne. This is what the future holds for um, so, I have a nine year old daughter. For me and my uh -huh. nine year old daughter. Okay. She is actually a very old soul. She's always been more, more growing up. Is she, she's, she's an only child. Yes. Yeah, and she's always been more growing up. She's an old soul. You find that in her. She's and sometimes I almost feel like she takes care of you, and she's kind of the parent for you. And and um, <laughs> yeah, uh, can be and she, <laughs> yeah, she wants you to be healthier. I know that. Um, I yeah. because I feel like your diet is not the best, and um, and I think you kind of need to look into your diet there, Suzanne, because I'm getting kind of maybe some health issues that might be happening. So yeah. start start taking better care of yourself. That's the first thing, okay? Um, and I know I can hear your nine-year-old telling you, you know, like, it, I don't know, I'm not saying that she says this exactly, but it's something along like, eat your vegetables, mom. They're good for you, you know, because she wants you to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like she's the mom telling you how to how to eat better and, and uh, things. She's very smart. Um, now... Is she having a, I, I know that she's very intelligent, but I feel like she might be having a few difficulties at school and I not necessarily with the education part of it. No, yeah, it's just the tools and other children. Yeah, I'm sorry? Um, she was being teased at one moment at school. I, I'm sorry, honey, I can't hear you. Uh, do you have the volume turned off? on your Facebook? Are you there? I'm here, yeah. Yeah, because at one point she was getting teased. Oh, that the event then that was now. I can't hear you. 
Um, <laughs> okay, so let me talk about your nine-year-old daughter. Okay, so we're talking about her. And did you say that she's having issues like with bullies in school? That's where I'm kind of going with it. Yeah, I feel like she, she might be picked on a bit. Yeah, but it's now yeah. she's – the one thing I really want you to tell her is that it does not matter what anybody says about her because she is a beautiful little girl inside and out. Um, she's very smart. She's got a good head on her shoulders, and I think she's she's going to prove all of them. They, it's like they're not going to be in a good way, but she's going to do something with herself. I feel like – is she into taking care of animals and, and a caregiver? Because I feel like she could be like a nurse or something in the medical field, um, especially when it comes to animals, because she loves animals yeah, and she, she takes loves, care she of them. She loves animals, yeah. Yeah, so I think that with the animals, what you, you know, like, because it, it, she's she's like a caregiver. I see her as like a veterinarian or a nurse or a vet's assistant or something like that in the medical field. Um uh, and and what's going to happen is she's going to grow up and she's going to be somebody and make something of herself. And these other kids, you know, may not necessarily be as successful as she is. And just let her know that there is no reason in the world for her ever to believe anything that anybody says to her in a negative way because it's not true. She is such a positive, beautiful little child. I, I say little child. I don't tell her I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so um and uh are you starting a new job or no. are you look are you are you looking at starting a new job or getting into a different career yes I am yeah I was thinking about yeah. um clothes designing I'm sorry clothes designing I was looking at oh, clothes yeah and um I I think it, as soon as you said that, I immediately got kids' clothes. So look into use your daughter yeah, as the model. Yeah, that was on one of my list actually. Yeah, I think that you do really, really well at that. Um, and and start with the kids' clothes, and it's almost like you can develop as she grows, and she's she be your model. Um, if you ever want an older, you know, late fifties model, let me know. I'll come and help. You. I'll come to New Zealand and help you out, okay? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I think you should follow that. The clothing, I think, is with kids' clothing. Start there because that will be your most successful thing. To it'll give a good boost, and you'll be able to move up from there. Okay. Thank you for that. Oh, for sure, for sure, and. Start taking better care of yourself, okay, for your daughter, yeah. all right? Yeah. Look at your diet. You need to eat more greens, more veggies. You already know that. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. So you start yeah. taking better care of yourself, miss, okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And go give that nine-year-old girl of yours a big hug for me. I will do. Thanks so much for calling in, Suzanne. And I'm Thank you. just so Thank you. I'm so honored to do a reading for someone in New Zealand or anywhere else in the world. So thanks so much for calling in. Have a wonderful evening or day. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, I don't know if I've ever done one in New Zealand, Janine. No, that's fantastic. Do you listen every week? Yeah, try to. Do you? Sweet. So it's, it's not every day that your sister sets an alarm for your show on Tuesday night. I do. I really do. Yeah, she does. She loves me. I know. I love her, too. All right. So I guess we should probably head on down. We just, this family time, all this mushy stuff. We should move on to the people that need help. I can be mushy later, okay? All right. Then. So let's move on to the next caller. It was Jenny from Scottsboro, Alabama. I haven't been to Alabama in years. Are you there, Jenny? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Do you have your radio turned up or your Facebook turned up or anything? Could you turn that down for me, please? Okay, it's turned down. Perfect. Thank you. That's so much better already. So tell me where Scottsboro is first. Um, that's a small, pretty flat right now. Okay, and where is it located at? What's it close to? 
Um, it's close to like Huntsville and um, if it's coming from the other side, Tennessee, like Kimball, Tennessee, and all that. Okay. <laughs> I used to live in Phoenix City. That's why I was asking. Oh. And I'll I worked that in. Uh, it's right on the Columbus, Alabama, Georgia. I mean, Alabama, Georgia. Uh, Gosh, it's right on the Alabama, Georgia line. And I, it's like uh, I worked, I lived in Phoenix City, Alabama, but I worked in Columbus, Georgia. So that's, and I don't know where else it's close to. I can't even think, but it's south. So anyway, so that's, that's enough about me. Um, I bet it's hotter than Hades there though, isn't it? Yeah, it's hot. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, I was in Texas a couple weeks ago, and I when I walked out of the airport, I felt like I was walking into an oven. And I remember Alabama being very hot too. So, so how can we help you tonight, Miss Jenny? Um, I would like to know about my mom. She um she passed away, and I just like to know if she's okay and. To know if I'm doing everything right, like I need to be doing. Honey, I feel a lot of love for you from your mom. You two were pretty close. Um, and she tells me that uh, it wasn't always like that. There was a few times, like, you guys weren't perfect. There were arguments that happened. But that's just, you know, normal, everyday mom and daughter kind of stuff. But um, she says that you need to hear this. Um, she says she's very proud of you that the um, the arrangements that you have made, um, because I feel like there was a lot of things that you had to, like, tie up loose ends about. And, um, and are, oh, hello, are you still there? Oh, goodness, I think, I think we lost Lucy, Suzanne, but probably just temporarily, because I, I have a magic man, and, and he's, he's in this little box. I don't know. He talks to me through here, through my headphones. So I'm not sure. I, I guess he's in my headphones. Maybe he's just, oh, no, there's lots of things in my head, but I don't think Dave's in my head. <laughs> so um, I will just wait and see if Dave can get Suzanne back. And, and or uh, Jenny, sorry. Um, so, uh, Jenny, if you can hear me, your mom wants you to know that she's very, very proud of you. And all of the arrangements and the scheduling and all that you've had to do, um, and it's been very tough and very hard on you, and she knows that. And and it's like she stands next to you on your right-hand side by your shoulder. And she tries to, like, I want to say rub your shoulder and, you know, give you comfort and say it'll be okay. But what you've been doing, she's very proud of you for, because you stepped up to the plate, and you're you're. It's almost like you're having to grow up and be um, uh, the mature one in the family. I guess is how I would say that. Hey, little man in my head, are you there? <laughs> is Jenny coming back to us from Scottsboro, Alabama? So, Janine, what else? Let's, let's find what else we have in my dad, his office, okay? So, what do we have here that we can kind of, you know, what's in the closet or that room? Nothing, anything interesting? No, no skeletons. No. Oh, he, oh, there's no skeletons in dad's closet? No. Oh, honey. No, yes, there is. I'm I, one of them. Well, <laughs> it's just a little story. It's an inside joke. But um, my mom and dad uh, never married. And uh, my mother was an unwed mother in 1960. And uh, even though dad was a good Catholic boy and asked her to marry him, she said no, that no man would ever force him, never be forced to marry her. That's that's what she said. So, um, so yeah, I'm one of his skeletons. <laughs> but my dad's a big golfer, too. So there's golf stuff all over the place. So, oh, okay. So it looks like we're not going to be able to get Jenny back. I'm so sorry, Danny. Uh, but we do have Stephanie in Seattle. Are you there, Stephanie? I am. How are you? I am really good. How are you? Um, I'm okay. Could be better, but I'm okay. You know what? 
don't say that you could do better. Just be gra grateful for the way that you are right now and tomorrow will be better. All right. What you're going through right now is something that you just have to learn a few lessons and you have to try and find the positive in it. It won't last forever. I promise you. Um, but this is a warning sign for you to start taking better care of yourself emotionally because you don't. You always put everybody else first and you leave yourself second. It's time maybe for you Got to put it. yourself first. Pardon? I said I got it. You got what? I understand what you're saying. Oh. <laughs> to, to take okay. better care of myself. Okay, <laughs> good, good. Because I kind of feel like you're on the edge of like um, becoming a very spiritual person. Like are you starting to get into the spiritual side of things and starting to awaken? Um, or, yes. Or become Been aware? really focusing on uh, myself and I just got plugged into a um, spiritual community here in my neighborhood that does meditation and stuff, and we did a, a chakra cleanse on Sunday. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. You're exactly where you need to be. Understand now, as you start to um, become more aware of who you are and, and start to become your true authentic self, that there are going to be lots of challenges that are going to come up. And uh, you need to remember that as soon as you sit there and say, man, I got this handled, yeah, the universe is going to say, really? Well, let's just test you here, okay? So prepare yourself over, over the next little bit um, to have some what I like to call learning opportunities, okay? Um, I also want to talk to, what, how is your love life? Is there a man in your life right now? There is, but it's, it's um kind of up in Not the, the air. One, I, one of my questions. So yeah, yeah. I don't think that this is uh, um, the man that I see you with. I I don't feel this one. Um, I see a taller man, probably about six two, and he has a uh, darker hair. Um, but it's almost like maybe he. I want to say like he lightens it or something, or maybe puts like some streaks in it or something like that. Um. And it's a little on the wavy side, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And I think that this is someone who you will be friends with before you ever go out with. And it turns out that the two of you have quite a bit more in common than you thought originally. Uh, you may even know this man right now. Um, mm -hmm. I just lost my train of thought, sorry. Um uh, um, and also, uh, you have, the spiritual community that you have found is, uh, is very strongly connection, a good, a real strong connection for you. Okay. So don't let them go by the wayside. Okay. okay. Did, did you have some questions? Um, I've got a lot going on right now and I'm kind of pulled in a bunch of different directions and I guess just some clarity. Okay. You say I'm in the right place at the right time, but like I was thinking about school, I've got a lot going yeah. on with my kids, I've got a lot going on with this man that I'm connected to and you know, well, I think there's just a lot. I think right now. I feel this is just kind of where the feeling is for me is that right now um, I don't know that the relationship is as strong as it should be to go through what you're going to be going through in the next year because you're really going to be busy. You're a busy woman anyway. Like, do you even have cable TV? <laughs> I, mean, no, I don't even feel like you I have don't. time. No, because you are going, 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 busy, busy, busy all the time. So, um, You need to focus. You don't want to get too many um, um, irons in the fire. And you you do that quite a bit because you have to be such a busy person. And if you're not busy and going all the time, you feel like you're being lazy. So let's not have that feeling, okay? Focus on one mm -hmm. thing 
because your kids are going to be taking in that time as it is, right? So they'll fill in any extra time you have. Schooling is going to be beneficial for you because it helps you to get the dream job that you want. But I don't think that you'll finish. I think you're going to find that it's not what you're really and truly as interested in as you think. So when you go to school, Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't go to school, but what I am saying is... um, focus a huge focus for you because you're you're allowing things to fall through the cracks because you're not focusing on one thing you're trying to do everything okay if you need an assistant Mm -hmm. find an assistant (laughs) train one of your kids to be your assistant right but remember for sure (laughs) but remember to take the time and focus okay okay all right thank you for your time i appreciate you Thank you so much, Stephanie. I appreciate you very much for calling in. I appreciate all of you who listen to me every Tuesday night. It's Terry Lynn Boyle. I'm from uh, Vancouver Island, and I am known as the Vancouver Island Medium. You can get me on Facebook at Vancouver Island Medium, or you can get me at Amethyst Forest. Uh, Lots of different places. So it's me from Fort St. John, British Columbia, this Tuesday night, leaving you until next week when I'll be back in Vancouver Island, or on Vancouver. Hugs, kisses. Have a beautiful week. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Say bye to me. Bye.